Okay, AP Physics C, I'm gonna go ahead and lead you through um, essentially this scene, the potential mini lab, specifically the data collection process. So if you wanna go ahead and pull out that handout that Ms. Henderson should have already given to you, let's kind of go through the setup together because it's a little bit convoluted, there's a bunch of stuff going on, um, and then talk about exactly how you can take this data. So what I have here, first off, is this is just a plastic tray. Um, I've basically put underneath this a paper grid that Ms. Henderson will give to you. You cannot read it real well in this video, but this says A through K at the top and one through seven on the side. I just wanna be able to identify the different squares. And I've put a little bit of water in the bottom of this plastic tray. You can basically tape this paper to the bottom and then essentially on the underside, I guess I should say. And then we put just a little bit of water, you know, basically half a knuckle's worth, essentially. There's a sink in the back of the room. You're welcome to use that. I put these two binder clips here. These are really just holding these wires in place. And essentially I fed these wires through. They're just alligator clip wires. But what I've done is basically got them, and if you need to, you can bend or manipulate these slightly so that essentially they're poking pretty much into the water and touching firmly the bottom of the tray. The reason for that is just we want to keep them pretty much in the same place for this entire exercise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two nine volt batteries I'm gonna basically hook them together. So I'm gonna put positive to negative on one of these. And what I've essentially done right now is create an 18 volt battery, essentially. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a separate alligator clip here. And you wanna make sure this is one that's kind of tiny. And I'm actually gonna connect it in the middle terminal here. So I'm gonna have this go across the middle, like so. And then I'm gonna take the other end of this and I'm gonna have it attached to the black cable of your multimeter, which should be the cable that is in the, hooked in the COM terminal. So the common terminal. So essentially what we've done here is this is essentially gonna be my zero. That's what that's gonna be. So I'm gonna have that hooked, that's not gonna move. I'm gonna take the one of these two wires, as you can see here, and you're gonna to have to maybe move these back in a second. I'm gonna attach it to one side. I'm gonna take the other wire and I'm gonna attach it to the other side. I'm gonna put these down. And like I said, I'm gonna to have to probably, they're gonna be a little finicky. I'm gonna to have to reposition these slightly, but there we go. Okay, so what I've essentially done now is by having this be 18 volts and having the black be the center or the zero point, the multimeter is gonna read that that is zero and one of these is hooked to the, this one is hooked to the positive terminal. So what I've essentially done here is I've essentially simulated a positive point charge. It's generating positive potential, a positive field from this point. And the other one is gonna be essentially a negative simulated point charge. So I have them sticking in the wire. It's not gonna hurt you. Putting my finger in there right now. It's not gonna electrocute you or anything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have my multimeter turned on. I'm gonna make sure that this is in the red one is plugged into the voltage position. I'm gonna move it to DC voltage as a reminder that is the V with the little lines. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to about 20 volts. That should be okay. I might even wanna adjust it to two occasionally. And what I'm gonna take with do now is I'm gonna take my other lead, the one that is not connected to anything. And right now I'm just gonna firmly put this in. And we can see right there I'm getting about 3.8. I move it somewhere else negative 2.16, move it over here, 3.5, move it over here, 0.8, move it right here, really close to it, 6.0, and negative 5.03. So what essentially I'm doing is I'm actually making it so that I can measure the electric potential at all of the points in this grid. And what you're gonna be charged with doing now is taking this little sensor and basically putting in A1. A1 is 3.56, B1, 3.37, C1, 3.01, D1, 2.38. And you're gonna do that for every single box in this grid. So fun, I know. Simultaneously, as you're doing this, let's record that data then. We're gonna do that by using, now it's kind of hard to see here, but I pulled up this Plotly program that's described in your handout. And I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make a free account. You can just use your, Gmail, email, it, you're not gonna use this for anything else, so it's totally fine if you just use that. But make the free account, and then it should send you into a page like this. I'm gonna go to Create, and I'm gonna go to Chart, which is the first option down. And essentially what you'll see here is I have a table up here at the top. I know it's very hard to see in the video, but I'm gonna click on A1, and it's marked exactly like this grid. So this one was, once again, 3.57, so I'm gonna write in 
seven. Oh, it's changing slightly. 3.49. Let's change that to 4.9. Okay, so B1, and it's going to be a little bit, you know, they're not going to stay constant the entire time. 3.28, so I'm going to move over to 3.28. Now notice, and I'm going to do that for every one of the points on this grid. So it should be 77 points in total. I've got um, 11 columns and 7 rows. And you're going to do all that, making sure, a couple things. One, do not put any units in this program. Just put the numbers, or that will mess things up. And two, you need to be recording negative signs if a value is negative. So for instance, H1 is negative 1.85, so I'm going to do negative 1.85 for that one. The negatives are really, really important. Okay, so essentially you're going to do that, and then from here, once you get all this data recorded, you're going to follow instructions on how we're going to basically plot these data in a couple of different interesting ways. So you're going to need to break up into groups of two, and I recommend getting this all set up. So once again, we've put these two 9-volt batteries together. I've hooked the black lead of the voltmeter to the center lead here, and I've linked that there. The red lead is totally unfixed and can move around. And then each terminal of this battery, I've essentially linked in one side or the other hooked in there. And essentially, you want them to stay fairly constant. So I would say once you have them set in place, Try your best not to move these. I know that's hard, but try your best not to move them. So I'm going to recommend that one person take all your data and like basically be like E1, 1.42, F1, 0.3, G1, negative 0.7, and have someone else on their laptop recording all this data. If you want to, you can trade out halfway through. That's totally fine. But we want to get all this data recorded and go ahead and you might be able to, and it would be great if you can get the data recorded and go ahead and get these plots made following the instructions. I've only given you instructions for the maximum I want you to do today. Um, it's great if you get that done. All right, that should be it.